and gentlemen, coming to you live from the Lucky Dog Studio in a hidden location somewhere in the upper Midwest of the United States of America, it's a brother making his own way but with all the wrong opinions. Welcome to the Morning Night Live with your host, the one and only P-Dog Knight.
Well, fuck me. <laughs> Thank you, AD. Um, oh, my God. Let's try this again. Let's just try it. Let's just try it again. I'm just, I'm, let's just try it again. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from the Lucky Dog Studio in a hidden location somewhere in the upper Midwest of the United States of America. It's a brother making his own way, but with all the wrong opinions. Welcome to the Morning Night Live with your host, the one and only P Dog Knight. <laughs> Okay, I think this works now. Let's try this. That's <laughs> good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Party Night Live. I'm your host, Marty, also known as P Dog Night on the internet. And welcome back to the P Dog Night channel on this Thursday, the 28th of March, 2024. Uh, Liz Cheney is over there because that was the best thing on the list today to put on the screen. I'm not even going to tell that story again because. Fuck it. She was at my alma mater to drew a big crowd and she's going to be the savior of democracy, apparently. Uh, and Des Moines is, you know, it was at my old university. They had a, they had the basketball arena. They filled the house. I don't think she was the only speaker, but um, she is. Uh, I'll talk about her later. Anyway, let's just say hi and get it started. I, I apologize. My brain ain't working. Thank you, though. Um, Avocados Diablo, guess what? <laughs> for dropping that small bullet and said sound man <laughs> which means you are you are the, the new stream lab superstar, superstar sponsor of, of the, the day. day it's also birthday week here um i'm also known as the last boomer it's birthday week and all that stuff and um uh, tomorrow we're gonna have our live uh it's hijack the show day uh we'll, we'll do our q a day but also if you want to drop a hamilton in the tip jar with your link i will stop the show for your links tomorrow um because uh we're celebrating the birthday and i'm supposed to be going on a vacation that we can't afford and whatever it's 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 birthday week so i this is messed up let's just get into it because i screwed this show up thank you avocados diablo for for doing that thing let's get into the show because i'm already i'm late and everything's just messed up by the way no rumble today because there's a glitch on rumble um they have two systems now and neither of them <laughs> seem to work so i couldn't uh i couldn't stream on rumble today so i'm glad you found me here there is no rumble and that's the way it says it on on, on uh on the app formerly known as twitter aka um x so let's get it started first the chat day Somnambul Nation, what is going on here? Oh my goodness. <laughs> beat, you, you got beat, AD, AD, AD. Maybe that's why I'm so flustered and messed up because AD wasn't first in the chat. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? Anyway, also, good morning, Cap Castiabli, Kara Soldier, Aaron Meredith, JB's in the house. Um, Hoko Sports, welcome back. Um, no, number one is here. Uh, Tyler F. Attack Alpaca. Pa Packy. Attack Alpaca. Um, what the hell happened here? Jesse Leon's in the house. Jethro Hetero, welcome. Good morning, GDSOB. Um, Mike Savage, blarg. Uh, Tyler F. is here. Uh, Don Julio, Gulf City biker and trash man's in the house. Uh, TC's in the house. Yeah, I got you. I wasn't looking at the chat either because I, I scrolled up to say hi to everybody. Good morning, Maddie. What's up? Um, also, good morning, uh, Aaron Meredith. And um, <laughs> I see all of you are chilling, killing me. Um, let's see. Anybody else here? This is why I do sound checks before I start talking. I don't. I can't do that. I, I just don't. I, my sound, I can hear myself whether I got you guys uh, whether you guys are here or not. Anyway, also um, hmm. Okay, who else is here? You guys have been just making fun of me this whole time. I just love it. Tribute Liberty, what's up? <laughs> Simon Wolfwood, Will It Forge. I think that's about everybody. If I missed you, just keep chatting. I'll figure it out. Let's go, because I got now nah, I'm I'm just pressed for time now. By the way, I'm going to probably edit that whole thing out, maybe if I can. I'll try to. And where is my music? Right here. All right, let's get into the news because it's time for the news. Uh, so, um, now, this is, uh, I don't know if you're 
if you know, um, where is it? Just um, a, this is breaking. Actually, this was yesterday, I believe. It's U.S. Senator Joe Lieberman um, has passed away. Uh, Joe Lieberman, wasn't he, he was a one-time vice presidential no nominee, um, former Democrat U.S. Senator from Connecticut, and a one-time vice presidential nominee has died at the age of 82. His family said his passing was a result of complications due to a fall. Lieberman was Al Gore's vice presidential pick in the 2000 election, served four terms in the United States Senate. He was the first Jewish candidate on the ticket for any major political party in America. He ran for the Democratic Party nomination for president in 2004, ultimately losing to John John Kerry, Gerlurch. Um, look, um, Lieberman was a, a, a Democrat. I, I liked Joe Lieberman. I, you know, um, sensible guy. I mean, he was a Democrat and he you know, push Democrat parties or de Democrat policies. But I think Joe Lieberman was a good man. And um, so it is, uh, it is, I'll say with sadness that the nation mourns Joe Lieberman. All right. That's that news. Also, uh, it, it the day, today in the day is opening day. <laughs> opening day is trending because it's opening day for major league baseball. And me not being a baseball fan, I'm kind of, eh, okay, whatever. Now, I was supposed to sing the national anthem at a Twins game uh, two, what, a week from Tuesday, but my plane's not going to get back in time. Um, I, was part, I was a part of a choir. The, it's the Bloomington, Minnesota um, Community Choir. We're singing the national anthem at the, at the Twins game, and uh, I'm going to miss it. I feel bad. I, I wish I could make it, but... Um, but that's that's about it for opening day. I mean, I, I I if I'm at a baseball game, I like going to baseball games. They're fun to go to, but I just I can't. I'm not a fan of baseball, and I was a big baseball player when I was a kid too. But you know, opening day. Now the only thing, other thing, so things trending though, trending because of opening day. Play ball is trending. Um, no, that's not it. I better not scroll because I'm not. I'm worried about, um, whatever. Um, so anyway, whatever. Um, it is also Monday, Thursday, it, um, it, which is the um, it, a part of Holy Week. And uh, here's a post. Foot washing is a symbol of cleaning your walk. Daily re repentance. Have you let Jesus wash your feet? Monday, Thursday is also known as Holy Thursday. It's the Thursday of Passion Week, one day before the Good Friday, um, the Friday before Easter. Monday, Thursday um is the name given to the day on which Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples known as the Last Supper. Two important events are the focus of Monday Thursday. The first, Jesus celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples and their part instituted the Lord's Supper, also called communion. Uh, some Christian churches observe a special communion service on Monday Thursday in memory of Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. Second, Jesus washed the disciples' feet as an act of humility and service and thereby setting an example that we should love and serve one another in humility. So that is the meaning behind Monday Thursday. If you are a Christian or Catholic or any of those other denominations of Christianity, um, you probably knew that it was Monday Thursday, which also means Holy Thursday is trending. And then um, the Last Supper is also trending. Now, here's something interesting about the painting that Leonardo da Vinci did of the Last Supper. It's the top post on this. Good morning, Anon, one, two, three, one, two, three, and. Um, so... The Last Supper, painted by Leonardo da Vinci, is 526 years old, and it's had a rough history. So monks used to eat breakfast next to it. Napoleon's soldiers turned the room into a stable, and it was bombed during World War II. And somebody once added a new door that destroyed the feet of Jesus. <laughs> That's that, There's a door there, so um, now I, it's painted in a... I'm not sure where it's painted, but um, so anyway, this day commemorates Jesus Christ's last supper with all his disciples. So anyway, that's that's what's going on with that. Those are the things trending because of it. Now, let's find some people who are trending. Now, um, often when a celebrity trends, <laughs> you know what's coming. And this today, the celebrity that's trending very highly because all the um, leftish people, Democrat types, are so excited that Larry David said something TDS style. He said some shit about Trump, and of course 
he'll be trending. But and since you know, I'm an equal opportunity, um, I'm an equal opportunity, uh, you know, guy. What I put on the show, I will put <laughs> Larry David's little um, thing that everyone's posting about Donald Trump being a killer of democracy. Fun to this country because he's such a little baby <sighs> that he's thrown 250 years of democracy out the window oh, no. by not accepting the results of, of an election. I mean, it's, oh, no. it's so crazy. He's such a sociopath. Mm. He's so insane. Yes. He just oh. couldn't admit to losing. And we know he oh, lost. My gosh. He David, knows he no, lost. Dave, are you, Larry, and look how he, he's fooled everybody. Larry's so smart. He's convinced all these people that he didn't lose. It's he's a, such a sick man. He's so sick. Anyway, no, hasn't oh, he's very angry. Larry David's very angry. Now there's other clips. I th are they all using the same clip? I don't know. He knows he lost. Uh, it's sick man. Uh, sociopath. Yeah. Um apparently Larry's very upset. Larry's very upset about Donald Trump. But so that that's an about about that. Let's move on. Um, because that's why he's trading. Now this, I, this isn't trading, but I'm curious why. Um, so remember that guy that got arrested at the state of the union, uh, Steve Nikui. Well, apparently he was on Tucker's show or went on Tucker and apparently, um, well, the quote here is, I don't know why they hate us so much. Gold star father arrested at the state of the union tells Tucker Biden never contacted him. So the gold star father, Steve McCoy arrested at president Joe Biden's 24 state of the union address told Tucker Carlson. He was never contacted by Biden in an interview. Remember his son was one of the 13 that were killed in the withdrawal of Afghanistan. Apparently Joe Biden never contacted any of those families. Now that's really wild to me. McCoy is arrested for, or after rising from a, seat, from a seat during Biden's speech and shouting, remember Abby Gate, U.S. Marines, about the Democratic president's infamous withdrawal from Afghanistan. Nikoi's son, uh, Marine Lance Corporal Kareem Nikoi, was among the 13 U.S. service members killed during the suicide bombing amid the chaotic evacuation from Kabul. C uh, Carlson learned that the Biden administration never reached out to Nikoi since the Gold Star father received his deceased son's remains at Dover. Um, the question between the time you spent in Dover and received your son's remains, staying in the Motel 6 with human feces on the wall, between that and the State of the Union earlier this month, had you had any contact with Biden or the White House? Carlson asked. Never, Nico replied. We never had any contact with the White House or Biden, and we have reached out, or McCall and several people, several families have reached out to, you know, maybe have a roundtable with them, see what they're what their thinking was, anything, you know, uh, onerous or, you know, onerous. Or, or, well, I don't, I don't know what this means, but, but yeah, no, the Biden administration never reached out to those, so, you know, because they'll reach out to, you know, if, if some, you know, they, they, I mean, they'll go have a vigil with George Floyd's family, no, or or whatever, you know, it's like, what are you talking about? How could you? How could he not? Um at least made a phone call to those families. That's pretty, that's, that's awful. I'm, I'm, I'm really just, I'm, I'm disappointed in that. Um, so anyway, I, why that's not trending, I don't know. Maybe it's because it was on Tucker Carlson. Um, but, but, um, oh, I already did the Larry David thing. I do have a separate, um, link to the Larry David video if you want to watch it again. It's just hear, hearing him whine like a bitch, if you ask me. Um, also, again, Liz Cheney's trending, and she's trending high because she was in Des Moines, Iowa, at Drake University at the uh, arena there. And look, I mean, it's a big crowd. Now, it wasn't... Um, I don't know if this was just for her. I They have an event every year where they bring in a bunch of people to speak, but apparently she was... You know, speaker. She she drew a big crowd in the basketball arena. Um, now I remember Iowa is is a Republican stronghold, but Des Moines is very, 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 um, very liberal. And uh, so uh, she drew a big crowd. Well, um, and she was. Let me just give you. I'll give you one example. There's several different clips that they like to that they're putting on here. 
But here is one of them, for example. And this is typical. This is about, well, let's go, let's see. What's the shortest one? I don't want to do a long one here. Those elected officials who know the danger that he poses, but yet, okay, here, this, this, is, this is a typical uh, clip from this particular um, event. And look, nothing in this event that she said has she not been saying on any channel that I have her. She's very popular with the media right now because she bashes Trump and thinks that he's the danger that democracy is. She, so she's here to save democracy. So here's, here's one of them. The Republicans... Um, at the, you know, after the January 6th attacks, there were a couple attacks. of weeks where we were really unified. Attacks. And um, everybody seemed to understand and recognize the mm. need to, to reject what had happened, to reject Donald Trump, and to move forward. And, until they started seeing actually what happened. And some were like, oh, there's something wrong here. There's something wrong with this, anyway. But as soon as, uh, you know, Kevin McCarthy went to Mar-a-Lago, sort of welcomed Trump back into the fold, began to help rehabilitate him. I think that, you know, um, you really did begin to see uh, the development of sort of the Republican Party um, beginning to embrace him again. And there were a whole range of reasons why that happened. I think mm. you, had, you had some elected Republicans Policies? who believed that he would just disappear who thought, you know, we don't have to actually speak against what he did. We don't have to actually stand up to him mm. because, you know, certainly he will fade away. Mm. Um, and, and obviously that didn't happen. And, and I think when people look back at this time, at, at the history of this time, those elected officials who know the danger that he poses, danger. who know that danger. what he's saying... Is he more dangerous than your dad was? I'm just curious because... You know, the history doesn't look real good at uh, look real, uh, real fondly on Dick Cheney and the Bush administration. Uh, well, although the establishment does, because, you know, they did enable the war machine. But some of us who are like looking back at that and going, what the fuck did we do? Um, why did we why why did we have to even have a Joe Biden withdrawal from Afghanistan? Why? why you know, why? Uh, you know, anyway, is a lie. Who knows? who know that he threatens fundamentally our democratic system. Ah, uh, yes, savior of democracy. Hello, Anthrax Allen. Hello, um, Anthrax Allen. That place looks like the arena they had the last laser fest. I don't know what the laser fest is, but that kind of, sounds kind of cool. And welcome to the show, Anthrax Allen. Yet have enabled him and have gone along. You know, they will be judged very harshly by history because the, oh, will they he now? can't succeed without them. And oh, so so anyway, so she's, she's um, in Des Moines trying to save democracy. Um, and if you want to watch it, I mean, there's clips of the entire talk there. Um, she says, I think the Republican leadership itself had to make a choice between furthering the democracy. And again, it's so funny they keep saying democracy. When, when they say, when, look, even Liz Cheney, when they say de de democracy, you saw the offspring in Des Moines? Is that, it, I, that's cool. Um, democracy every time they say democracy they mean us in charge they don't mean democracy they don't because otherwise they wouldn't be trying so hard to stop people from voting for him that's that's my take on that so anyway liz cheney is saving democracy now there's also another story now this is gateway pundit so it's it can't I, jim's always a little bit out there a little bit hyperbolic about some things so i'm not so sure but this is um but this is what her tour is about and i i agree with jim on this jim's the gateway pundit by the way um and uh wait why is this not fitting on the screen that's weird oh there, there we go so the future of democracy depends on making sure republicans are not in the majority <laughs> this is liz cheney is now campaigning for the defeat of all republicans and this is from a couple days ago liz cheney spoke at the new orleans book festival at tulane university so she's just on a tour basically saying the same shit over and over and it was another opportunity for Liz to slam and smear her former party. Liz Cheney left Congress after suffering the worst defeat by a sitting lawmaker in U.S. history in her Wyoming primary. Not even Democrats could bail out the old Trump, Trump hater. Her most memorable speech to date, Cheney compared herself to Abe Lincoln after getting trounced by 28 points. Last week, she was back on her soapbox. This time, Liz took the 
on the entire Republican Party. Her, her new line is how dangerous Republicans have become since Trump arrived on the scene. She wants all Republicans to lose. <laughs> and, you know, I it's it's amazing that um I, I don't i don't want i don't want all republican rule necessarily either i don't want i just i want it so that the people in washington have less power so i don't care but i certainly don't want the democrats in power because they do stupid shit and i don't want them doing stupid shit but she says she says i believe that we're in a situation where the future of democracy and there's that word democracy depends upon making sure that the Republicans are not in the majority in the House and the Senate in 2025. She, look, does she know what she's saying? Does she know what will happen if that is the case? If, it's, if you have a, a one-party government, look at California. Look at Minnesota, what kinds of things they are passing. Are you nuts, lady? And then she announced she may run for office again. Well, she'll probably have to run for wash, uh, office in another state because she's never getting back um, into, through any primary in Wyoming. Let's just say that. She's done in Wyoming. She's toast there. Um, all right, let's move on because i got to get through these a little faster. Sam Bankman-Fried is trending. His sentencing is today. If anyone sees anything um, about that, uh, let me know. But to throw in Crypto King, why is, why is all my stuff? off sets today that's pissing me off everything's why is everything off uh, we'll just do it this way to throw on crypto king sam bankman free to set to be sentenced for defrauding ftx investors uh the democrat donor sam bankman freed the big time democrat donor sam bankman freed um faces potential decades in prison when he is sentenced on thursday for his role in the 2022 collapse of ftx once the world's most popular platforms for trading digital currency freed uh 32 was convicted in november of fraud and conspiracy a dramatic fall from a year earlier when he he and his companies seemed to be riding a crest of success that resulted in a super bowl advertisement and celebrity endorsements from stars like quarterback tom brady and comedian and tds sufferer larry david <laughs> so hello special can ask by the way um so yeah, there's so he's gonna the recommended sentence is forty to fifty years. So he's uh there's a good chance he'll be gone for a long time. Now, um Bankman Frieds and his attorneys have repeatedly argued that he didn't intentionally do anything wrong and that he deserves no more than six and a half years in jail. In his trial testimony on October twenty twenty three, Bankman Fried insisted he used sophisticated analytics to try to keep track of the state of FTX's finances and suggested that subordinates acting without his knowledge made him imprimatur and cost or, or imprimatur made costly mistakes. But prosecutors citing testimony from a Alameda research head, Caroline Ellison, who was at times romantically involved with Mr. Bagman Freed, vehemently disagreed with the more charitable view and are pressing for a sentence of a half a century or longer. So they're going to try to put him in jail for 50 years or more. We'll have to see what happens there. So he's trending because of that. Uh, moving on, also trending the State Department is trending. Now, there was a very high-profile resignation from the State Department. Someone named Dr. Annabelle Sheline. <laughs> she looks like she's 13 years old, but she's, no, she's, um, apparently, um, this is a statement by her. Um, she's, oh my gosh, I'm not reading that whole thing. Anyway, she's leaving the State Department in protest of what's happening in Israel and Gaza. Um, in fact, she's saying here, um, since Hamas attack on October 7th, Israel has used American bombs in its war in Gaza, which has killed more than 32,000 people, 13,000 of them children with countless others buried in the rubble, according to the Gaza ministry of health. Okay. Again, I am telling you anything the Gaza ministry of health tells me, um, I take with a gigantic, grain of salt i'm just saying but um so she so then she continued, israel is credibly accused of starving the two million people who remain according to the u.n special rapporteur on the right to food a group of charity leaders warns that without adequate aid hundreds of thousands more will soon likely join the debt so um 
and I saw, you know, I was watching. So they did these drops, um, and it's mostly like military uh, grade MREs, meals ready to eat, um, which they've been sending, you know, aid into Gaza. And Ch President Biden's, you know, working on sending more aid into Gaza. So basically, we're we're funding both sides of this this conflict. Um, but they she keeps using the word they keep using the word genocide. U.S. implicated in genocide, yet Israel is still planning to invade Rafah, where a majority of the people in Gaza have fled. U.N. officials have described the carnage that is expected to ensue as beyond imagination. Well, in the West Bank, armed settlers and Israeli soldiers have killed Palestinians, including U.S. citizens. Now, wait a minute. Armed settlers and Israeli soldiers have killed Palestinians, including U.S. citizens. These actions, which experts on genocide have testified, meet the crime of genocide. Are experts? I love it when they say experts too. Are conducted with diplomatic and military support of the U.S. government. So that's why she is resigning now. Um, and in fact, there's uh, this is Democracy Now. Their left-wing organization. Just FYI, uh, Anna Anel Sheline a former foreign affairs officer has just publicly resigned from the state department over us policy in Israel and Palestine. She shares what is behind her decision on with democracy now. So she is big, high profile resignation. And again, here's another one, uh, CNN opinion. Anna Shiline writes that she decided to resign from her position at the state department, given us policy toward Gaza, whatever credibility the United States had as an advocate for human rights has almost entirely vanished since the war began. Um, and again, so Edward Snowden, you know who he is, says the White House defense of genocide is costing the State Department its most promising young officers. Um, I'm not familiar with her, but, uh, you know, is is that, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting thing going on here. Um, and who's, who's, in, who's, in, who's in charge here? Who's in charge? I can't remember. That's, uh. That's Joe Biden, right? I'm not sure. So it's 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 hurting Biden too, and um, I don't know. I I'm I'm gonna I, I need to take a look at what I'm thinking about here. Jodie Foster now with more for it. Yes, she kind of looks like Jodie Foster. So anyway, that's news. Also, New York City is trending. I'm gonna move on. Um, for a few reasons. Um, <laughs> one, women in New York City are being attacked by random strangers who strike and punch them in the back of the head, causing them to fall to the ground and suffer head injuries in a new knockout game-style trend. This needs to stop, so people are talking about that. Also, remember, <laughs> you know who John Stewart is. Well, he was very critical of Donald Trump in this fraud case and made it a big part of his repertoire lately on The Daily Show that he's hosting on one day a week. Well, apparently, there's a new fun fact about John Stewart. Uh, John Stewart's duplex... <laughs> and mar a -Lagra are both worth $18 million, according to New York City. But apparently he overvalued his home in New York City by 829% after labeling Trump's civil case not victimless, which, uh, according, I don't know any banks that are, are say anything that they are victims. But anyway, that's interesting. And then the other reason New York City is trending is because the two presidential candidates are going to New York City today. Uh, one of them is <laughs> here's here's why the presidential candidates are heading to New York City today. I'll put them on the screen big bigly. Lizzo, Mindy Kaling, and Ben Platt to participate in Biden fundraiser with Obama and Clinton. Yes, they're doing a big uh, a hoop de do with uh, Joe Biden, Bill Clinton, and Barack Obama. Big fundraiser. <laughs> that's why that's why Joe Biden's going to New York City. Yeah, I know the quartering, but you know, and then uh, here's here's uh, and then here's why Donald Trump's going to New York City. He's expected to attend the wake of a slain New York <laughs> NYPD officer. The Trump campaign said the former president is moved by the invitation to join the family and colleagues of slain New York Police Department officer Jonathan Diller at the wake. If you remember, Jonathan Diller was shot in a traffic stop. So uh, there is an article. Oh, here it is. Here's the article about John Stewart. John Stewart found to have overvalued New York home after accusing Trump of lying about property values. Comedian John Stewart is facing online mockery after a new report showed that he overvalued his New York City home 
during a sale. The revelation comes after Stewart devoted a recent episode of the Comedy Central's Daily Show to ridiculing former President Donald Trump over his New York civil case involving real estate valuations. On Monday's show, John Stewart accused Trump of lying about the valuation of some of his properties, claiming Trump's shenanigans cost the city of New York. <laughs> no, they didn't. But the documents obtained... Um, the documents came by the New York Post appear to show that Stewart once overvalued his own New York home by more than $16 million. <laughs> In 2014, the committee reportedly sold a 6,280-foot square foot Tribeca duplex to a financier, Parag Pandey, for $17.5 million. But according to 2013-2014 assessor records obtained by the Post, the property had an estimated market value of only $1.82 million or $88 million. The actual assessment value for property tax purposes was 80, 847174 So, look, here's the thing. Because John Stewart doesn't apparently understand how real estate works. Um, he didn't over... Okay, he didn't overvalue his house. But that's the the assessed value, the estimated market value was $1.8 million, right? But it sold for $17 million. Okay, $70.5 million. And so, um, but that, but that's basically what he's saying, Donald Trump. He, over, he overvalued a property. Oh my God! Now, what's interesting about this? What interesting? Um, and that that property he sold to Parag Pandey. Um, now that Parag Pandey sold the property again, and he only got thirteen million for it. <laughs> so, um. Now, did John Stewart commit fraud when he sold his penthouse for seventeen point five million dollars? Well, no, obviously he didn't. He sold it for whatever the market would sell, you know, whatever the market would would carry for it. But he made a big deal out of saying Trump committed fraud by valuing his property, whatever. If, if Donald Trump listed a property for sale, he tried to get the most money he could for it, and he would list it for as high as he thinks he could get for it, and if somebody paid that, that's what it's worth. But if someone doesn't pay that, they pay less for it, that's what it's worth. It's just depending on who buys it and how much they're willing to pay for it is what the property's worth. The idea that you are are, are committing fraud by, evaluate, by, by valuing your property at a certain amount is kind of ridiculous. That's why the whole case against Trump is ridiculous, and especially that 400 54 million dollar whatever bond he was supposed to have that they cut knocked down that was they're, they're saying it's it's real estate it goes up and down all right now back to nypd though is also trending because of new york and again this is interesting here's another interesting little fact here and i'm not going to play the fox news but here so the police union in new york city on this this officer that was slain on a traffic stop the police union told the politicians of New York City that they were not welcome to attend the funeral of New York uh, NYPD officer Jonathan Dillard. But the police union in New York City reached out to Donald Trump and formally invited him. That's interesting. They are not the same. And so this guy says Biden and the Democrats created this problem and they'd never show up. This is what they want. So interesting. They they literally told New York politicians to stay away, but they invited Donald Trump. Now, I'm sure that the people of New York probably see that and are scratching their heads, too. Right. Because um, because they know what's actually happening in New York, no matter what the. No matter what the FBI says, because the FBI says, oh, crime is down everywhere. Crime is down, right? But people in New York don't think so. People getting pushed onto subways. They, 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 the governor of New York had to put the National Guard in the subways because it was getting so bad. And so, interesting, the New York Police Department said, hey, you, you dickhead wads, politicians, stay away, but we're going to invite Donald Trump. Very interesting. Good morning, Mr. Dax. I see you over there. Good morning, sir. Moving on. Um, uh, Michael Cohen is trending. <laughs> this douchebag. Um, apparently, there's a new. Um, there's there's some new information. That <laughs> now again, this is Gateway Pundit, so I'm always I'm always I'm always 
worried about the hype factor here. But he says a 2018 letter from Michael Cohen's lawyers admitting Trump knew nothing about Stormy Daniels' hush money transaction reemerges ahead of the trial. Now, this is interesting. Let's look at this article. Um, a 2018 letter from Michael. Okay, this is the exact same line from Michael Cohen's lawyers admitting Trump knew nothing about the Stormy Daniels' hush money reemerged. Uh, last year, the Daily Mail obtained a 2018 letter from Michael Cohen's lawyer stating Cohen used his own personal money to pay for porn star Stormy Daniels or to pay porn star Stormy Daniels in 2016. The letter also states that the Trump organization nor Trump campaign reimbursed Michael Cohen for the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels. Now this directly contradicts Cohen's testimony. Not surprising given Michael Cohen is a convicted perjurer as central bank, um, uh, excuse me, Trump has been accused of paying Daniels hush payments through his then attorney, Michael Cohen, in a scheme to silence her and stop the story about her alleged affair from being published in the National Enquirer. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg charged Trump with 34 felony counts related to the Stormy Daniel Huss payments because he's saying that you're by. So here's his twisted log okay, logic. He's saying that it's a campaign finance violation, although Trump's not being charged with a campaign finance violation, which is federal law. But New York, he says there's a law in New York that says if you um, do something to break someone, uh, federal fa campaign finance that it turns into fraud. And and so now we're going to charge you under New York law for federal law. I, I don't know that how they actually word that, but it's kind of weird. But anyway, so um, but it, it's that's not the only place that, though, there's a saying it's not just Gateway Pundit. For example, bombshell report, accusations. Em oh, and also, here's another one. Accusations emerge that Michael Cohen was having an affair with Stormy Daniels since 2006 and that the hush money scheme was cooked up by Michael Cohen to extort the Trump organization before the 2016 election. Avenatti shares details of his client, Stormy Daniels, whose real name is Stephanie Clifford. Um, the case and the fact that her and Michael Cohen were actually having an affair since 2006, according to Tony Saruga. I don't know who the hell Tony Saruga is, um, but I'm not sure. I, I'm not necessarily buying that. I mean, they do have checks from Trump to Michael Cohen, don't they? I thought they did. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I'm, I'm having a hard time believing that one. And then again, developing 2018 letter reemerged from Michael Cohen's attorneys admitting Trump knew nothing about the hush money transaction. The accusations that Cohen had an affair with Stormy Daniels since 2006 is making much more sense now. So this is, um, yeah, that's kind of wild. Knowing Michael, and then someone here says, Roger Stone, knowing Michael Cohen as I do, I believe this is entirely possible, if not probable. So, wow, that's a, that's kind of a, that's kind of a, twist to that case who knows so enough about that uh alabama is also trending now why did i pull this up oh because well there's several stories coming out of alabama one uh apparently there's a story about an uh, an illegal border crosser who has remained in the united states <laughs> illegally has um done a that terrible thing the worst thing you can do to a 14 year old mentally handicapped in or mentally incapac incapacitated girl in alabama i'll try to write i'll just read this again the persistence put this up here uh illegal immigrant pablo mendoza 23 has been arrested for allegedly raping a mentally incapacitated 14 year old girl in alabama <sighs> getting tired of seeing stories like that now also there's the other re there's two other reasons alabama's trending one is because apparently a state house special election happened a couple days ago and a, apparently a democratic a, a woman a democrat woman flipped the republican district by sharing her own abortion story and running on a message of protecting reproductive rights and in vitro fertilization. Okay. So a lot of people are making a big deal about that. 
Um, but the, it's, what's interesting, only 3,000 people showed up for the election. I don't know how many people are in the district that they ran the special election, but only 3,000 people showed up. And, uh, but it was, a, I think it was a plus, plus two or something Republican district. Now, here, the, someone called the editorial board, board. he's just uh, some dude. Um, a Democrat flipped GOP seat in Alabama this week. That's more evidence supporting my theory that the backlash against Dobbs can restore balance to a constitutional order in need of it. SCOTUS is lost, but Democrats could take and hold the House for years. Now, before you, before you get, get too giddy here, bucko, um, let's see, the congressional seat here in Alabama that Trump won in 2020 that just went Democrat by 25% is only the beginning uh, again, 3,000 people showed up. Special elections uh, in a Thursday, or excuse me, a special election on a Tuesday in the middle of March, not even connected to a primary, just a special election. So really, anytime you got a special election like that, it's who you, who and how you get people to turn out. <laughs> Only 3,000 people voted in this. And this is a state house seat in Alabama. I'm just saying. Um it's funny. And then also the uh, University of Alabama basketball team has a chance to go to the Elite Eight. So they're, that's why they're trending. Uh, John Eastman is trending. Apparently a judge in California has recommended that John Eastman um, be disbarred for his efforts in challenging the 2020 election. John Eastman was one of the attorneys uh, working for Trump. And uh, let's see here. According to the AP, breaking ex-Trump lawyer Eastman should lose state law license for efforts to overturn the election, according to a judge. Um, and some people are celebrating that. John Eastman should be disbarred. A California judge ruled Wednesday issuing her final report after months of hearings and testimony about his fringe legal effort to keep Donald Trump in power. Eastman will lose his ability to practice law in three days. You know, I got to say. <laughs> someone here says they barred john eastman for questioning an election but they didn't disbar mark elias for rigging one ouch we are in uncharted territory will we still have a country to save i this is uh holy shit this is uh that's a dubious ruling um he's doing his job as a lawyer and they're saying that he cannot he, they, he should be just barred for coming up with the legal theory now it didn't work it didn't happen um why uh, this is amazing to me lawyer did lawyer stuff let's disbar him exactly that's crazy that's crazy all right just reminder by the way guys uh the morning night live is brought to you by you the viewers of the morning night live please if you haven't shared the stream yet share it later i i'll, I'll put when i put it back into twitter or x or whatever i'll I, I usually bookmark it at the point where the show actually starts which means all that dead space will be gone at least when you click on it um, so if you do share it again, uh, share it at that point where the sound is actually on <laughs> and it'll be a lot better show for whoever, whoever jumps in. All right. Um, let's see here. Let's move on. And also you could, uh, hit the like button and, uh, P dog night to live St drop a deuce in the tip jar right now. The superstar spots today is advocate of Diablo. All right. Uh, what else is happening here? Jack Monroe. I'm not going to go through this one, but you can check it out. Because someone is this video from 2016 where a trans man was talking about being attacked. Um, I, the, I'm just going to leave this open. This is a this is very interesting. This this Dr. Julia Long um, kind of shreds this trans activist on some stuff, but. It's from 2016, and it's trending today, and I don't know why. Let's move on. Um, as far as the the uh, wreckage in the uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, two more bodies have been found after a massive cargo ship ripped apart Baltimore Bridge. The bodies of two construction workers were found on Wednesday after a massive cargo. Well, we know this that happened. Maryland State Police said that divers located the two bodies inside a red pickup at the bottom of the Patapsco River. The search for the other four missing workers who were all presumed dead was paused because additional vehicles were encased in concrete and other debris, making it unsafe for divers. 
The ship's black box was recovered by investigators from the National Transportation Safety Board, and members of the crew will be interviewed in the coming days. The Wall Street Journal reported that investigators will be looking at whether con contaminated fuel played a role in the 1,000-foot cargo ship, which weighs more than 116 tons slamming to the bridge. The ship can carry up to 10,000 containers and is considered an industry workhorse. So, um, gosh, pray for those people's families if you do that kind of thing. Um Baltimore ship black box data recorder taken by investigators. We just said that. So there's a whole other story. I don't know if you want to look that up, but they, they did find two more bodies. Um, also, the National Transportation Safety Board confirms that there are 764 tons of hazardous material aboard the cargo ship. Um, and that's and then they revealed the black box data before uh, prior to bridge impact. Um NTSB Chair Jennifer Hamandy appeared during a press conference regarding the board's inv investigation so far, stating that the time, at the time of the accident, there were 21 crew members and two pilots aboard the vessel. The vessel. Additionally, Hamandy confirmed that aboard the ship were 56 containers of hazardous material, which accounted for 764 tons. Um, and they said uh, they were able to identify 56 containers of hazardous materials, blah, 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 mostly corrosives, flammables, and some mis miscellaneous hazardous materials, class nine hazardous materials, blah, 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 blah. So um, if you want to get more up to date, I have three different articles on this. If you want to find out what they're talking about there. Also, wait a minute. Oh my goodness, Mr. Dax doing the most patriotic donation you could possibly do the big 1776 thank you mr dax saying here's some birthday money don't spend it all on colombian white leave some room for the dancers god dang and right the way mr dax you are, you are the, the new, new stream lab, lab superstar sponsor, sponsor of the of day. day thank you sir greatly appreciated thank you thank you very much that's awesome i appreciate it yes it's it's birthday birthday bu birthday bucks <laughs> in the house all right um now some stupidity that was going on on the internet um during this this bridge collapse and i and i'm calling it straight stupidity okay so the mayor of baltimore uh, brandon scott was being interviewed on on several several outlets and for some, for whatever reason, right now, anything, anything, even something slightly bad happens, people start trotting out the term DEI. Now, and so they were some people, some idiot on the internet was calling Brandon Scott DEI mayor, which is just stupid. First of all, mayors are elected people. Baltimore is 60% black people. It's not a surprise that Baltimore has a black mayor. This is just dumb. It, it's starting to annoy me, and I don't get annoyed by much, but every time something happens, oh, the wheel falls off a plane, oh, there must be DEI, blah, 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 this and that, no, DEI this, DEI this. Look, um, <laughs> the whole DEI thing, um, which I'm not a fan of, okay, I, especially the equity part, because I think diversity and inclusion will just happen naturally if you just let people uh, live their lives and try to make people successful. As long as you get kids to graduate high school, DEI will happen. And that's the part where they need to start. They start in the wrong end of the scale. They start when you want a boardroom or you want, you know, some computer, you know, programmers. You want this and that. And you, oh, well, you need to have some diversity, equity, inclusion here. Well, first of all, you got to start where the kids got to graduate high school first and then maybe move on to some shit. But this is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. People calling a, a, an elected mayor of a city that's 60 percent black, calling it a DEI mayor. That's just some dumb shit. And it started to get some pushback, even from my fellow black conservatives, especially. Well, I, I hate to say black conservatives because there, there's, there's several different uh, classes of what I would say are black conservatives. I hate even using the term, but we're just conservatives and there's, but there's, there's different factions, right? And it's starting to irritate the people that you want on our side. There's a lot of great people out here that just happen to have a little more melanin than the others that are conservatives who start to get turned off by this shit. And these are people who, who could, who could help in certain communities where we're trying to get some inroads because Joe Biden's such a fuck up. Okay. 
So calling everything bad happens DEI is getting really fucking annoying. So this mayor, they were calling him the DEI mayor. And, he, and look, I rarely ever think the point is well taken when it's something happening on Joy Reid's show. But it's beginning to feel like what he said. The Baltimore mayor, Brandon Scott, on Wednesday on MSNBC, the readouts that said that critics calling him a DEI mayor do not have the courage to call him the N-bomb. And you know what? I, I It's starting to feel that way. So stop calling everything bad that happens DEI. Discussing the uh, Baltimore Bridge Collab, host Joy Reid said, the most idiotic and racist theories had to do with their newest boogeyman, diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is DEI. And look, you're right. It's it's now it's becoming just a stupid boogeyman instead of having serious conversations about it. Because the biggest problem with DEI is that little middle line. Um, Republican congressional candidate, a, a Republican congressional candidate in Florida tweeted that DEI did this. No, that what the fuck did it have? That what does that DEI have to do with a Singaporean boat with a full Indian dot Indian, not casino India? Um, Crew it has nothing to do with it. It's a fucking mechanical failure on a boat. And right now, anytime someone someone says that, oh, it, it's, it must have been DEI. You know what that usually means? They're usually saying black people. When in fact, D, most DEI programs, you know who they benefit the most? Just like, a, I'm going to say it. DEI is just a new name for affirmative action, Based by the way. I'm just saying. It's a, new, it's a new way to say affirmative action without saying affirmative action. But you know who DEI benefits the most? White women. Okay? <laughs> just saying. It just does. You look at any DEI department in any university, and it's, it may be one or two black people, and the rest is a bunch of white women. Because white women have feelings and feel their feel your pain, and then they get the job because you got you feel you know they're considering having a woman in a position is considered diversity. So anyway, stop it, please, please stop it. <laughs> Just women in general, yeah, that too. But you know what I mean. So let's not let's stop calling everything fucking DEI, okay? Just I'm just saying. Um. And then, and, and a right wing blue check account that's been boosted by Elon Musk in the past just blew straight past the dog whistling, tweeting to his 267 followers, Baltimore's DEI mayor, commenting on the collapsed France Scott Key Bridge. And it's going to get so much worse. Prepared, prepare accordingly. The post included a clip of Baltimore's black mayor, Brandon Scott. So, anyway, uh, he has an absolute point there. Because y'all, not y'all, not you. Now, my audience, my audience is awesome. But not everything's fucking DEI just because something bad happens. Just let's let's get off of that. Uncle Bad Touch, what's happened? I know who you really are. You're a line dog Whoops. face. Whoa. Come on, man. There we go. All right. <laughs> Next. All right. I got to get through these last articles quickly here. Um, the Fifth Circuit of Court of Appeals uh, has denied a Texas motion to keep their new immigration law or to um, kept, keep, they're keeping that immigrant, the law, the block of their immigration law in place uh, late Tuesday night, because of, of course the fifth circuit court of appeals route two to one to keep the block on the Texas immigration law. However, the dissenting opinion by circuit judge Andrew Oldman is the most important information. So here, to, Oh my guess this is long. I'm not going to go through this. Um, in the dissent, let's see, Oldman didn't like using the Arizona case of the decision, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of legal maneuvering stuff in here, but I, if you want to get more detailed, uh, look, um, <laughs> as much as I like the idea of the Texas law where they can say that you're, you cannot be in our state. If you come in our state illegally, you're breaking our state law. As much as I cannot stand this administration's immigration policies or execution, um, immigration is the purview of the federal government, period. And I, 
you know, unless they deputize Texas to to help them with this, um, I think they're on shaky ground. So um, I I like the idea, but it's not constitutional as far as I'm concerned. Um, but here's some good news. The influencer who advised illegal migrants to steal American homes. Well, he's on the run from immigration authorities. Um, remember this asshole? I don't know if you saw this asshole. So this guy, he was going viral by telling illegal immigrants how to invade homes in America thanks to progressive squatters laws. Um, he was saying that you can invade a house in the United States. Um, and what do you think about this new law? Basically he's saying some states give squatters rights if, in abandoned homes. So he was incur he's a TikTok influencer from somewhere. And, it, and he was telling people that you could steal people's homes if they're not occupied um so anyway he entered the country through eagle pass texas before being registered in the alternatives for detention program the new york post reported federal authorities reportedly tracked migrants using ankle monitors and additional methods during the program marina was categorized as an absconder after failing to abide by the program's rules internal documents from immigration customs enforcement uh obtained by the outlet revealed uh, the illegal migrant was originally released into the U.S. on parole as a result of overcrowded detention centers. Subject has been on national news for being a viral TikTok in encouraging or being viral on TikTok for encouraging illegal immigration ICE documents obtained. So they're after him and uh, I hope they find his ass and find some place to maybe they can send him to Venezuela or something. But Venezuela probably won't take him. Anyway, he is uh, he's on the run. Good. Fuck that guy. Um, speaking of squatters, now there's a squatter, Scott, squatter squad engaged group helps homeowners kick out freeloaders. There's a new squad in town, but this squad isn't comprised of far left nitwits who pretend to know what they're talking about. No, this squad actually stands up for people in instances where they're the authorities do next to nothing. This new squad, squad called the squatter squad. And with all its recent problems with freeloaders stealing other people's home, typically in communist states like New York and California, this group does exactly what you think they might do. Get rid of the dead weight. Think of it as the Orchid Man. As reported by Red State, the Squatter Squad website says the following about their services. Quote, we offer fast and effective squatter removal and prevention services throughout Southern California. Our job is to save our customers from all the waste of time, money, stress, and headaches that come with from squatters overtaking your property. Um, I don't. What do they do? They go in and <laughs> let's see. It's interesting to see all of these posts about our company, and it just shows us how the need to solve such a big problem is long overdue. I'm posting a clip of this particular guy because he kind of sums up pretty well. Okay, here it is. Let's see what he let's see what he does here. I don't want to hear the music. So let's see. We posted no trespassing signs, added a new lock for the gate, and boarded up the windows. Oh, this is the squatter squad. This is the crew. Um. Oh, this guy's talking. Hang on. There, the the big thing that I think people need to understand, and let's go to the squatter squad. Let's go to the squatter squad website. We're gonna read the article. Fox got a good article on it. Okay, we're not gonna do that. We're not going to do that. But anyway, um, so anyway, good. They have, a, there's a, they, you know, that's the great thing about America. You, if there's a need for something, someone figures out how to sell it to you. <laughs> there you go. Apparently three of four, three out of four Americans uh, are worried about illegal aliens voting in the U S elections. And that's a poll. That's not just someone, you know, that's not anecdotal. They have a poll, the issue insight issue and insights poll. Um, okay. Here in the chat, I got a question for you. Are you worried here? Let's, it, we'll, we'll do our own little poll. Let's do our poll here. It'll have to be quick though. Um, no, no, not Q and a, what the hell is this poll? Where's the poll? There we go. Start a poll. Are you worried? about illegals voting in the 2024 elections. All right. Answer the poll. There you go. Um, PJ Media. Let's see. Oh! <laughs> uh, so, apparently... 
this is a representative from Arizona, Eli Crane. On March 27th, he said, currently about, thir- about 35,000 veterans are homeless across America. Instead of taking care of patriots and- that protect our nation, Biden continues to provide free flights, housing, and services to criminal aliens. Talk about deplorable. Crane hails from the border state of Arizona where illegal aliens encounter shot up in February. He says, I live in Arizona. My local airport, Tucson International, is perpetually filled with a never-ending flood of illegal migrants who are being flown around the country with bulging bags of stuff at taxpayer expense, exempted from the same security measures we citizens have to endure to fly. Then there's free housing, prepaid debit cards, schooling for kids, medical care, a list of government financial expenditures for illegals is endless. Your tax dollars at work, my fellow Americans. Yeah, I'm sick of it too. Is everybody, anyone else sick of it? <laughs> I am. Um, oh, and guess what? Measles have returned to Chicago, and you'll never guess where. Uh, I'll just tell you where. In a migrant facility. Uh, and there's 31 cases in climbing. More measles infections in the past few weeks than the past eight years combined. But you didn't hear about this rapidly growing outbreak because it all comes, um, let's see. 26 weeks later, most of the cases have been associated with the Pilsen Migrant Shelter. So we're getting a new outbreak of measles. Um, moving on, uh, March, Mark Judge, apparently uh, Democrats use extortion and direct threats to pressure him into destroying Brett Kavanaugh. So remember when the, this crazy lady, uh, is it Wayne or Garth? I can't remember which one she looks like. Garth, right? Yeah, Garth. Anyway, journalist Mark Judge, the high school friend of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh, has publicly claimed that Democrats threatened and extorted him into potentially supporting Christine Blasey Ford's allegations of sexual assault. In an explosive interview with Martha McCallum for Fox News, Judge said Democrat operatives combed through his well-documented history of alcoholism, something he chronicled in a 1997 book, Wasted, Tales of a Gen X Drunk, as as a means to blackmail men. Does this surprise you? Uh, Is water wet? Anyway, you can watch that interview in this story. Uh, in uh, Washington Free Beacon, John Tester is fighting for his life in Montana is, is to remain a senator. Uh, remember, the Senate is uh, up for grabs. Hello, pissed off Shih Tzu, by the way. Um, and unacceptable views. John Tester, uh, <laughs> also, you know how the Democrats are always talking about dark money? Well, um, and in fact, the left green. Here's a, here's the lead. The left wing group and Citizens United earlier this month honored Senator John Tester as a trailblazer against dark money. But dark money is one of the reasons the Montana Democrat is in office. Since 2006, dark money groups have poured at least $7.5 million into Tester's campaign's record show. And that hasn't stopped Tester from making dark money his pet cause and a key part of his populist image going so far as to propose a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizen United and kick unlimited dark money out of our elections. So... If they did not have double standards, they would have none at all. Uh, let's see. Oh, gosh. You know, remember when Governor Andrew Cuomo um, had some sexual assault accusations and and uh, he left office in disgrace? Well, now they've apparently found a video of one of his accusers um, praising the disgraced Democrat. Cuomo's attorneys argued that newly unsealed evidence, including seven videos recorded by Bennett in 2019 and 2020, show that the former New York governor's aide did not cite Cuomo himself among the reasons she was considering leaving office, according to the Times Union. One video from January 2020 showed Bennett talking while driving in a car about her relationship with Cuomo, describing her former boss as an amazing and wonderful person. So, you know, I, I was always wondering about the Me Too against that Cuomo, but he's an asshole, so I, I believe some of it. <laughs> I don't know. But this particular one, there may be some, there may be a rest of the story. Let's put it that way. PJ Media, Obama has grave concerns that Biden will lose, and so he's ready to intervene. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you mean he's, what do you mean he's ready to intervene? Isn't he running the show right now? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, despite mail-in voting and ballot harvesting and a host of other perfectly legal ways to tilt the playing field, oh, could old Joe Biden actually lose in November? Well, if a Tuesday New York Times story is to be believed, the answer is a resounding yes. And among the most worried about the innocent corruptocrats, old friend and meant is and is the innocent uh, corruptocrats, old friend and mentor Barack Obama. That's because Barack Obama's 
really oh by the way there was some story do you know Barack Obama talks to Joe Biden on a regular basis and talks to his aides and things like that it makes you wonder doesn't it, it makes you wonder so anyway um Barack Obama's coming to the rescue. Well, they're doing it this weekend. They're having the big Clinton and Barack Obama and Joe Biden uh, fundraising summit. You know, it's funny, though. Now, why would they have Bill Clinton there? You know, because one of the big they, – they had, they had some high ground a little bit about Trump's extracurricular foibles. But then they bring Bill Clinton in for a fundraiser? Really? Really? Holy shit. Just wondering. Uh, RFK Jr., it's Biden who has to worry, not Trump. Uh, he, okay, he says the general rule of politics, whichever candidate is complaining about the third-party candidate, they're probably losing. Yeah, do you ever hear Donald Trump complain about Robert Kennedy? <laughs> I don't think so. But boy, the Democrats complain about Robert Kennedy. They are mad at him. So there's a story about that. Also, there's a story about, a story about uh, Kennedy's running mate. Is this it? No, this is, oh, this is DNC goes into full panic mode about Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s presidential bid. So, like I said, if you, whoever's worrying about, whoever worries about the third candidate, third party candidate, they're probably losing. And we know that most polls indicate Joe Biden losing right now. But that means nothing today. The only time that means anything is in November. So, but there's the story. Breitbart, exclusive book by Trump Intel officials. Cliff Sims exposes trans propaganda in the CIA. Why? Why? Why is the CIA? Why is the CIA pushing gender ideology? Anybody? You see, it's Cliff Sims, who serves served as the deputy director of national intelligence under former president Donald Trump exposes in his new book titled the darkness has not overcome lessons on faith and politics from inside the halls of power, how pro transgender propaganda lines the halls of the CIA. The book obtained exclusively by Breitbart news details Sims first time walking into the CIA after stepping into his new role. I walked through an obscure entrance and scanned my badge while standing inside a plastic tube that felt like something out of the 80 sci-fi flick now inside the bowels of the CIA original headquarters building, I was confronted with a maze of hallways lined with a lock, locked doors and plaques with vague descriptions of what might lie behind them. I finally found a bank of elevators and rode up to the main floor where the wide hallways were lined with a mixture of historical paintings and the type of promotional posters found in many corporate settings. The CIA's Diversity and Inclusion Office had more, many more posters touting its various programs and initiatives and proclaiming the importance of each officer's identity oh buzzword identity um he added but as it turned as i turned the corner to walk into the cia's cafeteria for the first time it became clear that the agency's diversity focus had a political angle as well trans lives are human lives so they why is the cia pushing trans propaganda ah you read about that and then uh oh speaking of which a trans weightlifter has taken the top spot at a women's event shocking to no one i don't know if you saw this one this was on libs of tiktok i saw this here's the here's the video of the uh the woman who won the i think it's a 75 kilogram uh event at uh at this uh 95 kilos. at this weightlifting competition here, there she is she's doing her lift and all right what is that bulge that's weird it's a weird looking woman okay and all right so this was in the uh this was in a 55 and up category 55 masters division whatever and she uh she <laughs> she won the event all right i gotta get out of here um Disney's oh Disney surrendered. They withdraw their Reedy Creek lawsuit. You know, remember the, the, uh, DeSantis? They took away their like autonomous zone that Disney had and, around Disney World, and Disney ha was uh, suing the state of Florida and Ron DeSantis. Uh, they've withdrawn the lawsuit. They they've decided to give up, so they can't uh, they can't control a their own section of Florida and determine their own taxes anymore. And uh, I think that's it, guys. That's Oh, that is everything. All right, I got to go. Hey, um, tomorrow, 
we're doing the all Q and A and hijack the show show. Um, drop a Hamilton tip jar. Bring your favorite article if you want me to read it, and we'll do Q and A pretty much the entire show because it's the birthday show. We're celebrating my birthday tomorrow, um, which I don't know what that means. I might do some trending topics if no one has any. Uh, oh my God! Did I see what I just saw? The only 165 snatch. Oh, no. oh my God. No, but I'm sure that he's a lesbian. So, you know, that's how that usually works. Anyway, guys, I got to go. Thank you for joining me today on the Morning Night Live. Uh, please hit the like button, share the stream afterwards, and you can spot us the show 24 hours a day at pdognight.live, which is the Streamlabs link. And the answer to the question today, 85% of you are concerned about illegals voting in our election. So, out of 20 votes. So, that's that's roughly... A little higher percentage, but then again, I have a little bit higher percentage of people who think like me. So there you go. All right. Got to go. Thanks. Um, I'll put the links in the chat during the outro. Got to go. My name's P-Dog Knight, and I am out of here. Bye-bye. Hey, this is P-Dog Knight, and thank you for watching today on the P-Dog Knight channel. If you have an observation or remark you'd like to make about this video or my channel, I absolutely welcome you to write it in the comment section down below. I really look forward to hearing from you. And before you go, if you like what you saw but you're not already subscribed, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and definitely click that bell that pops up afterwards so you'll be notified when I post new videos or when we go live. I broadcast my live show, The Morning Night Live, Monday through Friday at 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central. A special thank you to all the supporters of this channel who share our videos on social media and who make donations through Streamlabs, YouTube, Venmo, and Cash App, which are all linked in the description down below. Thanks again, and until next time, I'm P-Dog Knight, and I'm out of here.